Hey, what's up everybody? Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm showing you a uh, work in progress of another Superman shot. I've uh, been on a kick drawing the Man of Steel here, or trying to get him right. Uh, and you can, you know, you're always welcome to comment in the section below. Let me know what you think, what you like, to, what you think could be better, stuff like that. I'm always looking for constructive criticism. Uh, if it's presented friendly, I guess. But uh, anyways, uh, with this, what I want to show you today is some techniques for working in perspective. So not so much on drawing the character, but using Procreate, uh, which I absolutely love this uh, software. Uh, and, you know, you can get in here and work on buildings and things like that. And I'm going to show you how that's done. So first off, you know, I'll show you the basic setup of it. You're going to go into the t uh, gearbox here, Canvas. Uh, perspective guide you can turn this on or off okay once you've set it up so visually just taking it on and off visually it will give you these extra guides if you edit it you can move these points around so you're gonna pinch and scroll or pinch and you can't see me but I'm doing a two-hand pinch on the screen and pulling my fingers together to zoom back so like anything else with a touch screen a zoom function I'm doing that off the canvas off to the lower right just so you know uh, but if I was to take this and, and adjust these, if I grab either one of those points, I can move those around. Uh, now, I don't want to move those right now because it'll mess up my perspective. If I want a third one, I guess I will because I'll, I'll just make a copy of this. Uh, so essentially, if I move these around, I can adjust that perspective real quick. And if I tap, I can add a third vanishing point. Okay, so each one of these are your vanishing point. And really, for a scene like this, I could make the argument that this should be, uh, or actually, it probably would be a three-point perspective. So I could drag a third one pretty far off. Uh, you know, if I zoom this really far back, I can pull that down and then zoom in and check the uh, perspective grid and make sure it's all falling into place. Now, another way you can do this is after you've drawn your city, you can just distort it, uh, which I actually prefer that. But... So I'm just going to work off a, a two-point perspective. I'm going to see if I hit cancel here, if it still managed to retain uh, the information, which I believe it would. Uh, so essentially now if I go to a new layer, and you'll see I've got just lots and, layer, lots and lots of layers, uh, but I end up deleting a lot of these, obviously, but uh, I like to segment the work, uh, and I'll show you why I do that here in a second. Uh, so if I go to a layer that says assisted, notice on that layer it says assisted below layer 14. Uh, you get to that by just tapping this, and if you notice that little checkbox right there next to assist, it means that perspective assistance is on. So now every line that I draw will snap to those previous lines, and you can see it goes right with this building that I started illustrating here. So my perspective uh, lines have not been harmed. Now I like to, to go back into this gear icon and toggle that off. That doesn't turn off your perspective guide. It just makes it where it's not visually in your way. Uh, and I'll show you why I like that. So now, uh, let's see, I go in and work on this building. Let's say I want to work on this one uh, lower left here. What I like to do is, once I get a certain amount of the information in place, I actually like to segment a few of these. And you can click and uh, I'm just tapping on each little area that I want to add a new uh, point to the selection. And kind of click around that. Finish that selection. Do a three finger swipe down. We'll bring up this option, hit cut, and then paste. Now the beauty of this, and I and I, ha I have to hit that uh, little icon for the arrow up top to release it. Be careful not to leave it selected and then go ahead and move it, because then it'll move it out of place, obviously. Do a two finger tap on the screen to put it back. Hit the arrow to release, okay? <clears throat> so now I've got this on a separate layer. I can get that other information out of the way. I can tap on this layer, one finger tap, Click assist and now I'm ready to draw on top of this in the same perspective guide on a new layer so and actually first what I'll do I kind of jumped ahead here I'll take assist off I'll soft erase this so this is just a, a airbrush soft airbrush uh, scale that up and just lightly glance over this remember I'm drawing with the uh, Apple pencil I haven't tested anything else so I don't know what else might work but I know there are different styluses that you uh, can check into Tap that again, go back to assist, and now that I've got some of this rough sketch line work, I can start to draw in here with my pencil lines and refine this work. And I'll just show you some of the, the techniques that I use to do buildings. Uh, I'm not a very advanced uh, perspective artist, 
uh, or architectural type artist, I guess. But, uh, but you know, I do what I can. So one of the things I like to do is lightly sketch in, get some of my foundational information. And I do a lot of build up. So I'll take shapes and kind of do squares over top of squares or cubes over cubes, I guess. Uh, now you got to be careful because if you do this too much, you get a bit of plain Jane kind of effect. So you see this building even to the lower right doesn't have a whole lot of other angles going on and and you really need to try to work through that uh, and try to build in more detail as you go more angles and, and more curvature more um, rounded forms inside of these so essentially one of the things I'll show you that I like to do is say I'm trying to find this line through here but I don't necessarily want to draw through there and erase back which isn't a big deal but a, a nice trick that you can do digitally is you can just undo and draw through hover your your uh, pencil over that line undo and then redraw since you're able to see that line and undo all in, you know a couple series of motions you can hover your your uh, apple pencil whatever stylus you're using over that line and draw it with precision uh, and you know just use the undos and the redraw to your advantage so that's one thing I like to do there uh, let's see I'm gonna also just draw out uh, let me find this next shape here I want to recess that. Now remember, it's it's got those two perspective guides locked in. So I can just simply, you know, kind of just find this line work relatively easy. Uh, making small adjustments, like with any rough sketching and redrawing, I'm, you know, maneuvering things around as I go. Uh, let's make sure that, that one little line there is on a different layer. Yeah, it's part of this one. So we got a couple little hiccups there from that layer. Get in here, just erase that, scale this brush down, erase that, and jump back over to our other layer, like that. So it's pretty easy. It's a, it's a nice fluid process. I mean, uh, I, I haven't done a whole lot. Well, I shouldn't say that. I did, did a lot of this traditionally, uh, but it's been so long. I, I've been working perspectively, uh, with perspective digitally for a while now. Uh, now, another trick I'm going to show you here, if you were to... If you go to draw anything, it's going to snap and force you to these these uh, two perspective guidelines, right? The two vanishing points. But see, I want this angle that ends up over here. So a trick for that is just draw out and actually draw pretty heavily so you get a nice solid line. Hold for two seconds. And then, I've, I've, just so you know, I haven't let off the screen once. So let me redo that and show you. I'm essentially drawing off way off in the other direction, holding it. And it will snap too. And then now I can pull this line wherever I want. I've never released off the screen in this one motion. I can pull it to that angle that I want, then release. Now I'm drawn right back to my perspectives. That's a very helpful technique for doing this so that you're able to basically mimic other angles and other perspective lines without having to switch to anything else. It's all in that same kind of uh, you know process. So uh, very helpful to be able to do that. So again, just remember that if you hold that line for a few seconds, uh, and you can actually define that snap to function. So let me get some of this other line work and I'll show you what I mean there. So I'm just drawing these back in the other direction now. You know, I obviously got to go back and clean some things up. So really just focusing on trying to get some, uh, some depth into the uh, forms that I see here. So here we're going to see the top edge of this ledge. We want to get that in, draw a line down. We're going to get a line here, a line here, you know, so on and so forth. And then pan back, check the work. And then usually what I do to erase uh, any of my uh, sketch lines. Now obviously I could have just created a layer over top of this and not had to worry about cleanup. But I generally like to leave my sketch lines in there. I don't feel like it's too much of a hindrance for me to go back and just clean up some of the details. So I'll just kind of jump in there, soft erase some of it back, just like that. Okay, so let's check this from a distance. Let's go ahead and drop the rest of the uh, city back in there. And what I like to do here, just so you know, is I'll generally start uh, from these, you know, foreground buildings. I, I went ahead and detailed this building because I was kind of having some fun with this one back here, kind of ideas. And notice that some of this is ske uh, sketched in even off perspective. It's A lot of it's been redrawn now uh, ever so slightly just to kind of confirm some of the idea choices. 
But when I first start this, just so you're aware, this is kind of why I have so many layers. Uh, let's toggle these off. Uh, I think it might even be this blue line. Let me, just so you know here, you double tap on this layer right here, and it's going to give you your opacity slider. Pull that with one finger all the way to the right. And that's the initial sketch that I started with. So you can see it's very rough and very uh, off perspective. I just, I, I eyeballed it. But that's how I start everything. So initially, this was the sketch that I started with for the background. And then was able to refine that to what you see here. And then obviously I got to keep going to get it to, you know, a finished level. Uh, you know, same thing applies for Superman. It went from, you know, I'll just kind of step back and show you the progression. Started with that. You know, so you see there's a pretty big difference from right there to right there. Uh, so it's just a progressive kind of process. If I go back even further, yeah, it started off as a very rough kind of mannequin. Uh, so that was my initial rough sketch, just to say, okay, what kind of pose do I want to see? And then you see through the evolution of it that it, it worked up to something like this. So yeah, so that's, uh, you know, that's how I work through this process anyway. So back to the perspective end of it, you know, essentially if you set that up and you start to build on your layers and, and keep in mind the other thing that you can do, which is kind of beneficial, is say you're getting to an area where you're kind of, you know, you want to throw in some details, but you're not entirely sure. It's real easy to add another layer. Now, obviously, if you get too layer intensive like I have here, it can, it can kind of haunt you a bit. Uh, so what I'll tend to do is say I want to add some details to this building. I'll hit... Uh, tap once, click assist. Uh, let's say I want to try a different pattern of windows. Now, one of the things I'll do is sometimes draw what I consider a container box. Um, so let's say that I have this container for these windows that are going to go right here. And let's say there's an inset to the first uh, section like this. So you get a little bit of an inset like that. And then I want the windows to fit inside of there. And I just draw these series of straight lines, obviously using perspective, uh, the perspective guides to help me. And I, you know, I can't always get them perfect. I mean, there's obviously ways to measure these to get them perfect. Uh, I don't really hold myself too accountable because this is going to be looked at from back here. Uh, so chances are, I don't think anybody's going to call me out on my windows not being completely spaced out there. Uh, if they start pulling a ruler out to check my windows, I guess I'm in trouble, but... So, you know, so then I put those windows right there. Now, the cool thing about that is once you get something in place like that, and say you want to repeat that up in this area right here, the work's really done for you. You can, especially with that method I told you before, you could just simply pull up, uh, release it, and actually I'll put them in this next uh, inset area, not the not the ledge. Uh, so then I, I double tap to go back, and I put that line back into place. Because remember, I'm hovering my uh, Apple Pencil, Pencil, whatever, right over top of that area. So release or undo, redraw it. Same thing over here, undo, redraw it. And it's, you know, it takes a second here because I'm explaining the process, but it's really a lot faster. And then, you know, as I, as I start to pick up speed as I draw, and then if I come over here and then, you know, I just bring that line over. Now I can zoom in here and get all meticulous, but I really don't have to. Uh, I could just, again, remembering what this is going to be viewed at you know, what distance is a very important thing because if not you'll just especially with digital art you'll just kind of drive yourself nuts because you'll zoom into everything and that's just a no surefire way to not meet your deadlines is to overly get in the habit of zooming into every single detail there's a lot to be said for just working um, from a distance and then trying to you know work naturally so uh, one of the things I try to do, if I was to take this tablet and set it up right the other way, I can make this image the full size of a sheet of paper. I try to work mostly in that way because zooming in can really kind of, you know, can hurt you. Uh, and you got to remember that if you pan back really far and these windows get lost, then you're definitely over detailing and you need to pull back and, and think of it uh, more as a, as a whole, not as those tiny little individual windows and buildings because you can again, really get lost in that process. Okay, so let me stay back here a bit as I try to fight that urge to get too close. Again, let me repeat this. Now, one of the things I will say about buildings is, you know, obviously study from reference, but, uh, you know, to get ideas and other artists and things like that. But, you know, you really just want to think about the structure of it, the, the 
inset of everything. The more you can do that, the more ideas will sort of present themselves uh, and you don't just kind of repeat the same thing. So obviously I've got a lot of repetitive stuff here, but you can see in like this structure of the building, there's different amounts of inset and, and you really just try to get creative with that, you know, and just not repeat the same thing too much, I guess. Uh, but again, you also have to try to get some curvature in there, some different uh, angles. So like with this building over here, I tried to immediately come from this edge here and recess it back and do a, a little bit of detail back there. So when I first start, I start to detail most of it by the top of the buildings like this. So I can get a pretty good blueprint going from just these top sections. And then I can go, okay, I'm doing way too many of these L shapes, way too many of these squares. Uh, I need to mix it up. So then I'll throw in a, you know, an awkward angle or a different angle to the top of the building. I'll throw in a light curvature like I did right here. If you notice, if I draw a straight line, that's actually got a small curve to it. And I need to actually do a lot more of that within the city. Uh, just like back here, oh, there's a, an arc, you know. Uh, and an easy way to do those is really just to start with squares. Uh, maybe I'll show you that real quick and then we'll call it good. Uh, so I can get back to this and finish this sucker up. Uh, let's see, let's find... Uh, let's just do it to this building right here. Now first, let me show you too about you know keeping track of these layers. So essentially I added these details right there and once I'm okay with it, just simply tap it once, click merge down on the very right, and then now we've condensed down that layer to primarily that building and a few of the little sketches I did throughout. But essentially it just boils down to if you like the work, uh, then you can merge it down. You can be uh, confident that you're going to keep that and, and move forward. Okay, so let's go back over to here and let's see where we're at. So we need to be over here. I'm not going to worry about segmenting this. I'm just going to work off the existing layer. I'm going to take assist off. So I'm going to tap that once, take off assist for now. And I'm just going to soft erase some of this information. So this is still the rough sketch. I guess one level past the rough sketch to where I've got some of the information that I want to see in this particular building. You can see it kind of blends into this next building here a little too much. Uh, so if I wanted to add a curvature to the top of this, actually let me put assist back on. I would draw up, over, I'd find my edges first, okay? So you kind of look at it like you're building this, essentially. You know, you're going to find your edges, you're going to find center. Remember you click and hold, hold it on the screen until the snap to function occurs. Move that into place. It happens pretty quick, and you start to get faster at it, obviously. Then draw a line right through the uh, intersection of that, and right through the intersection here, and repeat that process. But now what I'm going to do is go from this end to here, back over to here, again using that Snap to feature each time. And now I'm going to use the center of the crossing point of these X's to do that. Now the reason why I'm doing this, it's like, all right, what are you doing? It looks like you're drawing a mini billboard over there. Uh, you're using this to find an idea of the way that this segments properly in perspective. This is great for windows. I've talked about this a lot in this channel, so I'm probably being a little too redundant, but it's also great for archways, and I'll show you why. So if, if I soft erase this down now, and I go to draw a, a uh, oval through here, I've got a lot better chance. I could draw this kind of pointed peak something like this, something different, you know, I've got a lot better chance of hitting that mark and making it look correct in perspective because I've got all these little segments that I know are perfectly built into perspective that allow me to do that. So that's, that's essentially that. And then from there, it's a lot easier to start adding the trim work and the detail to something like this. You know, you could simply add a, a piece of trim like this. Remember to get that inset in there. We're looking down at this building. So you're going to see another inset right along here. And you see I'm doing all this freehand. It doesn't really matter because I've got enough of that foundational information in place. And then say I want to jump back to the assist and I want to place in some large uh, standing you know, windows or something like that. Real easy to do. And then from here, from perspective assist, I can use that. Yeah, right there. I don't know what that other line was. I can use that to draw back and find these other other points of uh, intersection and repeat that process you know and essentially 
you know, if I really wanted to as well with digital art, it's real easy to take this. Let's take assist off. Make sure we're on selection and not draw. It's really easy to take this three finger swipe down, hit copy, paste, and we could just drag that right over to there and place it. Using now, keep in mind when you do this, it's going to get a little bit messy, so you got to practice it, but you'll get it. You'll start to see into the work a bit more, and you're going to use the perspective lines that you drew back to find this other edge. And then after that, you're going to erase a lot of this. Remember, it's on a floating layer now, and you really just need that what I would call a container or a rooftop or whatever you know so so there's lots of ways to utilize this it's a bit messy but that's where separating it like I did on these first couple of buildings makes it a lot easier to process all this detail but hopefully that gives you an idea how to work through some perspective and you gotta really just play around with it so remember you get to your perspective guides through here you can turn those on and off visually you can edit those right through there you're gonna take perspective and you're going to enable it by each layer by tapping it, clicking assist, uh, and it's really great. And then after you get all that information in place, so say, uh, let's see, say we want to merge all this together, for instance. Uh, let's see, I'll just go ahead and do that. It's not a big deal to, to bring it back if I wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and just keep tapping each one of these one time, hit merge down. I'm going to keep checking the visibility like that. So now I've got all that onto one layer. I can swipe over, hit duplicate. I can immediately darken my lines or do something if I you know, want to do that, but that's not really what I'm doing. I'll take one off visually. So I've got all that on one layer. I'm going to zoom back here and I'm going to click the arrow and I'm just going to see each one of these points. If I click and hold on each one of these for just a brief second, I can distort them. So I could real easily turn this into a three point perspective just by dragging these out. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that and obviously you got to draw behind the character for this to work perfectly but what I'm saying is if you if you know you're going to do that, if you know you're going to convert this uh, or if you're just going to draw a cool cityscape uh, to use in a couple of your shots why not detail the whole cityscape and then uh, you can flood fill behind the character. So there's just lots of ways to really utilize this type of stuff and and make it work for you. So hopefully this video has been informative for you. Let me know in the comments section below what you thought, what you'd like to see in the future. Uh, keep in mind for the snap to function, that's going to be, let me find that real quick for you. I just got to remember what I, I said I would show that. Uh, quick line delay right there. So see it, it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight down. And you can adjust the milliseconds. This is 0.55 seconds before it will snap to. So again, you really want to utilize that feature because you can hold that line and then pull it anywhere you want. So very beneficial for perspective drawing and just technical drawing in general. So yeah, anyways, if this video has been helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think. More videos on the way real soon. So please subscribe, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.